Hello everyone to another video on Avirishi. Today we are going to discuss an interesting paper uh, which is uh, on various areas of astrophysics and electronics. So the name of this paper is Panoramic SETI and uh, this th there are a bunch of papers published by this group of people uh, from Berkeley and also Harvard and also from the SETI Institute which is uh, institute for uh, detecting uh, other life forms so basically astrobiology but uh, with a lot of uh, funding and basically just motivation just to find uh, other life forms so yeah panoramic city is a um, big project they have had ma various projects in the past but this is one of the upcoming projects and in this paper they will be discussing about focal plane electronics and the timing and network protocol so they are addressing two things so first uh, they will focus on the fo fo focal plane electronics in which you will get to know about the sensor that they are using to detect or the cluster of sensors or the cluster of telescopes I must say and then there is also network and uh, timing protocols that they use and there is really good high speed stuff that they have used inside so let's get into, get into the paper so let's just uh, talk about the pivot uh, this is an all sky, all time visible uh, ground based uh, telescope that will have resolution of uh, nanosecond to millisecond time scale and it will detect uh, in um, optical infrared uh, regions and uh, it will be deployed at several sites. There will be a dome like structure which I will show in a while and there will be around 45 telescopes covering around 4440 square degrees so that's the really ambitious uh, goal that they have so yeah so r right now in this paper they will describe the focal plane electronics uh, the electronics uh, is having various boards so there will be a motherboard and four quadrant boards so quadrant board has this sensor which is a silicon photomultiplier uh, photon detector and it's uh, used to measure the pulse height and search for nanosecond pulse pulses and uh, yeah so basically uh, I'll get into uh, all these things uh, in a while first let us try and see what this uh, observatory is about so uh, you can check out their website uh, Berkeley's website and in that you can check out all the previous uh, Keck, Keck Ligger, SETI's own uh, Nero SETI, o OS uh, SETI and so on but this is what um, this uh, project is about we'll just see the concept video the thing isn't fully deployed it's still uh, under progress As you can see, there is a focal plane. Uh, we can't see the motherboard and the quadrant boards, but we can definitely see the focal plane. And yeah, uh, this is what uh, they are comparing with LSST, which is another big observatory uh, which detects uh, various kinds of objects like GRB afterglows, blazars, supernovae, uh, supernovae afterglows, and so on. And if you can see. Uh, these are really short time scale events that they are targeting and the luminosity is all around so a really ambitious project that they have targeted um, so yeah it will be also all sky which will be interesting and um, there will be a lot of electronics papers that will be coming out uh, for uh, when they fully develop it but currently we'll just focus on these two aspects which is about the sensor and uh, um, architecture of data flow so quickly we'll go over the block diagram of how the system works as you can see the quadrant boards four quadrant boards the power and the data so this data is being relayed via a cluster or a, a kind of a local server near the telescope at really high speeds uh, so uh, there is really high speed and talking about the detector the detector is also um, a really um, well um, established detector SIPM and it has 256 high speed photon uh, uh, there are 256 high speed photon detectors and uh, MARO C3 ASIC so there is an ASIC also on it uh, which will be used for uh, amplifying pulse shaping and uh, digitizing its uh, signal so you can have the data lines from the detection right here so a bit more about the ASICs and the detector that they have used uh, so the detector is having a, um, 
quite a relatively low cost i must say four dollars per pixel and it has really high speed of detection the electronics inside it ensure that and also the efficiency of detection is uh, claimed to be 25 percent so this is how the detector looks like you might have seen on the page as well of pano city but um, this is how the detector looks like it's basically just a big reverse bias diode a uh, lot of channels and there is um, some resistance and the diode thing which we can lump it up and model it like this between the anode and cathode so the quadrant board has lot of specification the ASIC has lot of specifications the FPGA is also there so what they have used is the Xilinx XC 7K160 FPGA um, for uh, like just handling all this data and then they have used uh, two uh, 1 GB Ethernet ports for uh, uh, doing all this communication with the base the motherboard is also having lot of uh, electronics on it uh, which they will be showing in the networking side so the motherboard's job is to relay the data over to the computers or the server and the thing uh, protocol that they've used is the white rabbit pro method or white rabbit protocol which is really high speed and has been developed by CERN a decade back for uh, uh, such kind of applications. We'll briefly go over the block diagram of one quadrant uh, board which will be housing 256 pixels. This is the ASIC, SIPM, SIPM crystal, so the 2x2 uh, the two two crystal, ASICs here and then we have the readouts. We have the HV controller, the H, there is a bias of minus 80 volts and 10 milliampere, and there is a DAC, uh, housekeeping ADC, other SPI, QSPI and the FPGA is um, a really big FPGA I must say uh, 678 pin and 256 for trigger um, and other uh, things uh, like there is also uh, Ethernet lines, clock lines and DAC, uh, not DAC, uh, ADC and DAC lines it is the board is powered at 3.3 volts at 0.5 ampere and uh, there is a clock of 100, uh, 10 megahertz given to it this is how roughly the board looks like. Uh, we can zoom in and look. Uh, this is the sketch on the left side of how the focal plane will look like. Uh, if you look uh, closely on the right side, this is the in-house board that they made, fabricated there. There is the crystal that sits here on top as a breakout. And we have both these uh, chips. So uh, these are the chips. So one is the FPGA and the other is the ASIC uh, the ASIC is near the detector but the other is another uh, chip for memory and so on so this is the focal plane motherboard that they have uh, the top side is having the detector so there won't be that many passives there but on the uh, bottom side you can see that uh, there is a lot of uh, chips and passives I won't be going into the detail of it but it's the uh, it's going to do the job of uh, taking our data from all the four quadrants and relaying it over to the server. These are the uh, specifications of uh, the SIPM. So it, it is biased at minus 70 volts. FPGA core voltage is 1 volt, which is really high performing FPGA, I must say. Uh, and yeah, for the ASIC, it's 3.3 volt. Uh, this is the rack that they made for. Um, the DC power supply for the 21 uh, telescopes uh, again we don't need to go into each and every board to understand this is now what they have uh, designed inside the FPGA you must say that this might be the digital logic sitting inside the FPGA so there is a micro place inside uh, Ethernet core Ethernet FIFO there's an AXI switch uh, that helps to uh, like flow through all these data lines and then there is uh, FIFOs more and then there is uh, this e a communication with the ASIC there is the Ethernet core ultimately all this Ethernet data is sent over so this is what the FPGA is doing and there is a resolution of 10 microseconds or longer and uh, we are using the white rabbit protocol for the precise timing so yeah uh, we won't go into all the block diagrams but this is another block diagram uh, of the same FGD and this is the block diagram on the quadrant side or the imaging side and uh, 
as you can see there is a state machine implemented there a FIFO AXI switch there is a RAM for storing the images uh, storing the event uh, the data there is the register space and so on so yeah a lot of uh, things um, inside the FPGA FPGA does a good job uh, in this entire form uh, uh, board setups okay so we'll talk about white rabbit uh, protocol so when we want to measure pulse height measurements PHS we want to know the precise time that each uh, optical pulse is received and um, the precision that they are aiming for is no more than a nanosecond which is like bold but yeah so um, this is the uh, we did not talk fully about white uh, rabbit protocol um, so basically in the FPGA block you might have, might have seen uh, WRPC which is white rabbit PTP core and that is what will uh, establish the protocol and do the data relay to the uh, local server so the network and the clusters that they have they are uh, just having the um, specifications of how much uh, uh, how much parallelism and all that stuff that they have done on the server end so that that, that will be at the dome side So yeah, uh, I won't be covering each and every aspect of the science part and more electronics part of the this project, Pano City, but I'll definitely be checking it out. Uh, you can go to this uh, for seeing how the TESA processing pipeline works. So the way the data is processed is in HDF5, which is a file similar to FITS, holds even bigger data. and um, it is used for uh, capturing all this uh, data that we get from the detector uh, so yeah this is how the dome looks like there is a lot of future work that they have uh, so we, they want to um, extend uh, the work for near infrared wavelength i don't know if with the same sensor or the different sensor so yeah this sums up the vi uh, video and i hope uh, you found this paper interesting